Hey, I'm Dan Hanks. I'm the author of Captain Moxley and the Embers of the Empire, which is this fabulous book here. And this is out from Angry Robot on the 8th of September this year. Um, I have been asked by the Super Relaxed Fantasy Club to come along and just get super relaxed on my couch and read you a little bit of something from the book. Um, and as it happens, I've been joined by someone else who wants to get super relaxed on my lap, so I will do my best um, in reading this book to you. Chapter 8. The Empire of Death. It was eerily quiet, only the constant drip, drip, drip of water from the ceiling, like a clock counting down to some indeterminate fate, and the wet echoes of the group's footsteps as they trod the path towards it. Two streams of torchlight revealed what appeared to be your usual dank, depressing tunnel beneath the city. Just enough room to walk two abreast, in between walls that at first glance were built of neatly stacked white cobbles. Will ran his fingers along them. Careful of the ancient human remains there, Will, Sam said absently. She directed her torchlight up to show that the cobbles were actually hundreds of skulls arranged in rows interspersed with other bones. He yanked his hand back as if he'd been bitten, causing Jess to stifle a laugh. You really aren't much of a field archaeologist, are you? I just prefer my bones in well-lit museums, that's all, he replied. Jess reached out to nudge a loose femur back into its hole so she could scrape past. Sam noted she wasn't perturbed by what she was seeing, or if she was, she was certainly covering it up well. So, who, who are all these people? Sam asked, shivering as a cold drop of water fell into the back of her shirt and rolled down her spine. They must have done something pretty terrible to have ended up here like this. It's not quite as macabre as you think, if I remember my Parisian history correctly, her sister replied. Their bodies simply got in the way of progress, right Teddy? These were all citizens of Paris, moved here in the 18th century when the government decided to reclaim the cemeteries for the expansion of the city. Yes, yes, that is correct. The good, the corrupt, wealthy and poor, they all ended up here, the product of capitalism and growth. It's a little creepy, Will said. It's archaeology, Dr. Sanford, Teddy replied brightly, shooting the younger man a beard-splitting grin. As you would know if you got out of your museum once in a while, we are but material remains in the end, and this is the proof of it. Whoever you are, whatever you did in life, this is where you end up. It's actually quite fascinating if you think about it like that. There's a paper to be written on human equality right here, if you are interested. Will laughed nervously. We'll have our hands full with the Hall of Records, thanks. Speaking of which, Jess said, how exactly did the millennia-old artifact we're searching for end up in an 18th century French crypt like this? I know the French were the first Western country to truly discover Egypt. Was it a find from one of Napoleon's many expeditions there? Nobody discovered Egypt because it wasn't lost, my girl. The people were already there as they had been for thousands of years and as they still are today. To think otherwise is to take the perspective of empire and colonisation, neither of which do the study of archaeology any favours at all. Archaeology is about objectivity. That's fine, Teddy, but like it or not, we're here because of empire and colonization. We've made incredible advances in our thinking because of such discoveries and the artifacts brought back to our museums over the last hundred years. You can't dispute that. I don't dispute that. Jess waved her torch at Sam, casting her eerie shadow across the rows of bones. You've gone quiet all of a sudden, sis. I thought all this stuff was your soapbox to clamber upon. You who used to take me to the Manchester Museum and who once told me the British Museum was your favourite place in the world. Still is, Sam called back, kicking aside a bone on the path and hearing a splash in the shallow water running beside them. I mean, I'm no expert, but I figure ancient things need to be preserved for everyone to enjoy. And if that can't be done in the precise spot where the artefacts are found, then, as a good friend once told me, they belong in a museum. But I think there's a question that needs to follow that. Whose museum? Ask yourself, how would you feel if ships sailed into New York Bay and took the Statue of Liberty with them back to Moscow? Which, by the way, could happen one day. Or what about Stonehenge? What if we woke up to the news that the stones had been moved and were now proudly on display in a museum on another continent under the, under the banner of discovery? That wouldn't be right, would it? When did you get so passionate about this? Will's voice piped up, his words echoing through the splashes of water as the path grew a little more flooded in places. Sam didn't need to look back to know he was desperately hopping between the puddles, trying not to get his fancy brogues wet. I thought you were a pilot, not a philosopher. Sometimes pilots get shot down and find themselves in the midst of war, she snapped back. 
and what I saw on the ground in person were invaders running roughshod over a whole bunch of different countries and cultures, stealing people and artifacts as if they were theirs to take. Once you see that, once you understand how that feels in person, you begin to recognise it in other, less obvious places. I respectfully disagree with your implications, Captain, Will replied darkly. This is not the same thing as what happened during the war. Ours is a noble pursuit of science, not domination. Very true, Teddy interjected, drawing up for a moment. Cold sweat and dripping water having plastered his hair to his forehead. He wiped it away as best he could with the, backs of, in the back of his tweed jacket sleeve. And I know Sam would agree with you, Dr. Sanford. That isn't what she's saying. Only that maybe we need to make sure we tread carefully in our noble pursuits, because sometimes even good intentions might not seem that way to those on the receiving end of our actions. Our gaze into history should always be humble and respectful and undertaken with a light touch. It's fair to say most of the archaeology in the rest of this book is not undertaken with a light touch. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, again, the book is out on the 8th of September from Angry Robot. Um, and as a bit of fun, I thought I'd show you next a clip of me opening the parcel with the book in it and seeing it for the first time. Right, so here we have a parcel. And this is a parcel that's come after 18 years of dicking around the computer <laughs> and writing long into the night. And now... There's a way of getting it out the middle. Okay. <laughs> mm. Can you believe this? Yeah. It's taken, it's taken a while. But it's worth the wait. Oh, <laughs> congratulations! 